Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian Premock. I'm uh, Vice President and General Manager of InSource Solutions. Thanks for joining us for our 30-minute session on Aviva Unlimited. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, attendees here today. Thanks for that. Uh, and because of the short time and the number of people, um, I'd ask if you have any questions. There's a box um, in your view screen. Uh, just type in your question. I will compile all of those at the end, and what we'll do is we'll um, basically take the questions and I'll get them answered and I'll return it to everyone that's uh, attended the session here today. Uh, we have some existing clients that I recognize and also some new people. So I wanted to start out by just taking a few minutes to introduce InSource if you don't know us. We're an Aviva Select partner for the Southern uh, United States and uh, helping clients uh, apply the Aviva portfolio to uh, manufacture digital transformations is, a, is what we like to say. Um, I'm proud to say I'm an employee owner here, like all of our fellow associates. We're a 100% ESOP company, and uh, we committed, we're committed to doing business by four key principles. Contribute, serve, build, care. And this simply means that our employees care uh, deeply about each other and our clients, and uh, we're trying to build a company that is designed to stand the test of times uh, by selflessly uh, serving you and contributing to the uh, broader community of industrial manufacturing. Um, our vision is really to make uh, people like you in the industrial uh, world more productive and profitable. And ultimately, uh, we call that goal uh, really, uh, it's all about revitalizing manufacturing. Uh, we've been privileged to serve over a thousand clients so far, and we're well on our way to deliver over a billion dollars in transformational savings um, through these engagements. And we don't do this alone. I mentioned we're an Aviva Select partner. There's, there's only eight of those in, uh, in North America. Um, we certainly uh, enjoy uh, uh, the technology that uh, Aviva brings to us. I, I've been a huge, a huge fan. I'm coming on my 12th year here at InSource. Uh, but I would also say that if you've been around technology, um, the words I'm about to say probably ring true. Our, our secret sauce is that we, we realize that technology alone is not enough. And so, um, the one thing that we do bring uh, along with uh, engagement, education, uh, is, is really uh, um, some methodologies to integrate uh, the technology we sell into your processes and your teams, and then support those for the long haul. Uh, we call it the in-source way, and time and time again, we've seen it unlock the, uh, the true untapped potential in your uh, plant and employees. So thanks again for joining us here. Um, you know, as, as I put this together, I was thinking about what I've seen in the first 90 days or so of 2021, and it, it kind of came down to these four trends. Now, number one, um, last year kind of set a precedent with regards to unlocking critical data. You know, if we look back, and depending on whose numbers you, you, you trust, you know, I'd say two-thirds uh, to three-quarters of American workers were, were sent home for at least some time, and, and we had to come up with new ways to work remotely. And, and what we've seen so far in 2021 is that after having to do that at breakneck speed, manufacturers are really institutionalizing that. They're making investments right now to make that permanent, uh, to gain more agility. Um, I would say at the same time, um, there had been a need for companies that were on a, on, you know, in search of a way to get better real-time information, break down silos, bring that information together in a way that people that are operating the plant can see what's happening in real time to make uh, critical decisions, they affect profitability. And, and that sounds easy, but it's, it's a challenge to do. Um, I'd say right in line with that is asset reliability. You know, this time last year, our economy was literally shutting down. But at the same time in manufacturing, you know, we, there were many customers that couldn't keep up with demand. And that was its own set of challenges. And like in, in uh, every minute of downtime when you're in an oversold condition, um, had a real cost to it. And you can see companies really pivoting hard towards moving from a break-fix mentality to anything that can help them um, move to pre-failure notification. Again, that's about distributing information. A lot of times it's out of that, you know, uh, that OT network that we work in. And finally, you know, when it comes to performance, people uh, um, are the key variable. And um, you know, this study from Gartner, same one, suggests that a responsive workforce is 20% more or, or more productive than their peers. And, and really that comes down to people are more productive if they feel like they have the right, uh, the, the right tools, um, 
they have the right information, people want them to be engaged in solving problems, uh, they do more. And that's common sense. But that, that's, again, easy to comprehend but hard to do in practice. I would then say that, you know, I like this quote. I picked this one out of a, a recent re, uh, presentation uh, that we did with Aviva. Um, executives used to think that building a highly resilient network was simply unaffordable. But uh, last year's crisis has made the ability to respond to change uh, really an urgent priority. And I think that sets the tone for 2021. And the reason I thought this was a really good thing to talk about is that Aviva, which you may, you know, you, you may have you may be in the Aviva portfolio or the Aviva world because of uh, having purchased Wonderware from us or maybe SciTech from us or maybe you, you purchased IndieSoft from us. Um, all of those things are in the SCADA portfolio and they and because of that, they've been a, they really are a market leader um, in enabling remote visualization and collaboration. And I think that leadership and their tools along with some new models that we're gonna talk about in today's uh, webinar are really opening doors to solve those challenges. So as I, I put this together, I kind of thought, I kind of organized that as the five things that I think you should know about with regards to the Aviva SCADA portfolio when it comes to unlimited offers um, and understanding the Flex subscription program that's uh, part and parcel with getting there. And um, we'll also talk a little bit about um, their cloud offer, which complements um, some of these ideas. So the five things that I'd like to cover today are Understanding of Eva Flex, uh, that's the Flex subscription model. It's kind of the foundation uh, of, of the way you access uh, some of these new features. Um, then we're going to look at a couple of concrete examples of how Flex licensing would work uh, in some unlimited, uh, let's say, unlimited SCADA scenarios. Then once that, you know, kind of established, then we can talk about the tools that can ride on top of that. So we'll talk about uh, some new mobile features that are out there. I call that going mobile. Um, uh, for the customers that are saying, well, wait a second, I've got, I've got uh, Wonderware or I've got SciTech, um, you know, and I, I have licenses and I have support. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can help you convert to Flex if some of the things that I'm talking about here today are of interest. And then finally, uh, like I said, uh, a lot of times people hear the word subscription and they immediately think cloud. And that's I want to be clear, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about just um, buying uh, or consuming software as a service with that software still residing in your plant. And you have the option to extend that with uh, cloud-based solutions, which are growing in the portfolio for Aviva. And um, you know, we, that's basically called Insight. So I'm going to talk about a few of those and how they complement um, the solutions that we offer day to day. So uh, sit back, relax, and uh, I'll dive right in here with talking a little bit about uh, the Aviva Flex subscription program. So, you know, at a very high level, um, I would say what makes this unique and one of the things that I think the Aviva team had in mind was that um, is an understanding that um, you, you might know and, and deal with in-source because you, you buy SCADA software, Wonderware software, and Past. Wonderware is now part of a much broader portfolio, and um, it's broken into kind of three components. Um, the, what they call the operations uh, portion is where you'll find uh, our SCADA portfolio, MES portfolio. Uh, we have another group of offerings in performance, which is really optimizing the operations uh, uh, life cycle for a given plant. That's all that everything that you make on, on top of your assets. And then we have an engineering portfolio. And again, you know, this is in the traditional realm of like 1D, 2D, 3D design tools. But with Aviva and the combination of these other elements, these become building blocks to combine that with instrumented data to, to, to form digital twins. And they're in a very unique position to offer that. So one of the things that Aviva has been doing with the Flex portfolio is really uh, reducing I don't know, the hurdles to for customers that are, that are buying this, just one portion of the portfolio to, to use these other areas. Um, and, and that's where they've come up with a credit program that's universally applicable. So if you were to enter into this program, uh, you gain access to credits and you can use it on any software in the portfolio. And um, that allows us then um, more access or more flexible access with new, whatever we're called flex licensing that enable new features, new capabilities. And, and I think this makes it much easier uh, to scale uh, 
uh, to your particular needs at, uh, at your facility. So that's the high level. Um, I always find it beneficial just to talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts. If, if you've been in the, what's called the industrial software world for a long time, I'm sure that you've probably talked to one of my people or someone about, you know, your architecture. What, what does the software need? And you'll see something like this, like for a SCADA system, we might have a, you know, a server that's kind of the hub of a hub and spoke system, a number of clients, there may be uh, a historian. And in the past, we would list all those licenses for you and give you the price to buy that and, and the ongoing cost to, to support it um, uh, long term. Uh, now, what we do is we can give that a cost in terms of credits. And, and um, we can say you could buy a bundle of a certain amount of credits that will meet the need of this application um, for you know now and, and on into the future. So if we take our traditional drawing and we and we uh, apportion a certain amount of credits to it, um, Aviva has um, a, these subscription tiers which are pretty accessible. So it starts with a you know kind of go a small, medium, large, extra large uh, of credits uh, that you would purchase to go and gain access to the software, but that's not really doing it justice. What's really cool about this program is that um, it, you can apply it to any solution. You have full control over the solution. So um, you, we, you may go and purchase uh, the, the credits and then something changes along the way. This sometimes happens in our systems integration community. No problem. We'll just, if, if you have not requested a license, um, you can just change your mind, get your credits back and use them for whatever is needed to, to adjust accordingly. And even if you have deployed your licenses on site, you can essentially kind of redeem them, pull them back, and you can reallocate your credits to some, some other solution or expansion. Um, another cool thing is the bundled feature. So um, within once you buy into the program at whatever level, there are additional things that come as kind of part of the, uh, of the solution. So... Uh, the software subscription, which gives you all the updates, all the major releases during the subscription period, tech support. Um, you now get things like development license comes with a bundle that used to be separate. Um, we used to have, you know, if in a scenario where you had a primary and a backup, um, the redundant licenses um, used to be additional line items, and that's all included in there. And, of course, what I'm going to talk about right after this is how these new flex licenses enable unlimited options for both clients and, and I.O., that's pretty exciting. So putting that all together, it's kind of the same old world. You can see I have my architecture drawing up there. I have a certain number of credits. Um, you'd work with someone on my team, and, and they would say, okay, uh, we need 4,180 credits. That would be the standard tier of service. Um, and uh, we would add uh, two more blocks of 500 credits. That's how you expand. And, um, and then we would quote that to you as a five-year subscription. The other uh, and the other really cool thing here is is that uh, Viva is now granting you know un, not unprecedented but certainly very very cool new access to your licenses in a portal. So if you were to do this, talk to someone at Insource, we would guide you into this portal and you would find all the credits that you purchased and then you'd see um, on the right hand side how the credits are are going to be deployed and then you can essentially request your physical licenses um, for, for, that, uh, for that deployment. And then, like I said, you can go back and change your mind. So you can pull back licenses and gain the credits back into your piggy bank and use them elsewhere. And it's also likely that you work with a group of people. And because you have credits and um, the credits you know, are there for other people to use, that you can manage requests from different people uh, to use the licenses. So at the end of the day, you can always go into the portal it's one single commercial model. It's got access to everything in the full Aviva portfolio, and you can make adjustments on the fly. So, you know, bottom line here, um, you know, Aviva Flex is all about leveraging, leveraging the value. Um, I know that the first thing that comes to mind for me is greater financial flexibility. I mean, we're, you know, even though we're a select partner, we're, we're a relatively small company. You know, even when we consume IT, it's been very advantageous for us to use subscription versus, you know, the old methodology of doing a CapEx expenditure, you know, that takes cash from different, you know, there's only a certain number of things that we're, we're going to be able to tackle on a given year. We sink the cash in that, um, and, you know, we may have to wait a given amount of time before we can go and tackle other challenges. 
you know, we believe the OPEX model or using the subscription uh, helps us uh, have a leaner balance sheet, and better cash flow. I think you'd feel the same way about it as well. Um, the other, other areas, commercial model, um, again, I talked about the subscription gives you the same access to licenses on the plant floor. You're not, you're not doing this through the cloud, but if you wanted to extend the cloud, that one commercial model handles that. And then I've talked about the bundled components, and I'm going to shift gears here into the second act and talk a little bit about uh, these new licensing features to give you a taste of what that would look like. So let me, let me uh, talk about the Aviva Flex unlimited licenses in kind of three different scenarios that could be enabled with a bundle of credits. So the first one um, that I picked is what we call an in-touch starter bundle. And, um, you know, in the SCADA world, a lot of, you know, some people debate this, but I, I always look at a, a, an architecture drawing because it's kind of the way people seem to relate to a supervisory control and data acquisition system. And in the center here, you'll see that I, in this bundle, I've got a primary and a failover server. Uh, these would come with the, the bundle, you know, as a subscription uh, that would enable you to, to access 60,000 IO, have failover, and then would enable five client licenses. These could be desktop workstations, or they could be, um, you know, on a browser or on an iPad or on a phone. Uh, that's what you see at the top of the drawing. It would, it would come with a license for a 5,000 IO historian and it would come with a license for um, a reporting solution on top of the historian where you can create um, reports and let people come to the server and grab those reports. And then, of course, there's a development license uh, window maker that's for InTouch. Um, that solution, you know, without having to worry about all the part numbers and intricacies, 700 credits, roughly about $8,500 per year uh, for a three-year subscription. I, I think it represents a great deal of value, especially if you've got a new project of a small to medium size. Take that one step further and talk about InTouch Unlimited. So here's another bundle in the credits program. And again, at, at the heart of this system, in the center of the drawing, we have uh, what we now call an InTouch HMI SCADA server. Right now, this is still at 60,000, but the roadmap is to increase the cap on that I.O. Um, as the technology permits, you know, um, to 100,000 and beyond. And it's a, it's a pair, a primary and a, and a redundant failover. And um, that license not only can access all the data from the PLCs uh, or control systems on the plant floor, but it permits as many um, in-touch clients, and that's at the, the portion in blue, that, that that server pair can physically handle. Um, and so that could be um, uh, fat workstation clients. It could be thin workstation client or uh, thin, thin clients enabled by uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop Services. Um, and it could be just uh, browser-based web clients um, or these new iOS and Android app, uh, apps that are available from their respective app stores. So very, very powerful. And coupled with that, 100,000 IO historian, uh, development station, and uh, again, a reporting server. Uh, so something like that could handle the needs, certainly, of a pretty large size SCADA project. Uh, that would be 1,500 credits. Um, and on average, depending on where you are and where you're viewing this, around $18,500 per year uh, with a three-year subscription. So I, I'm hoping to give you a flavor for what can be done with these bundled solutions. And finally, if you are um, uh, work with us with Aviva um, System Platform, um, you know, uh, there's a misconception out there that System Platform supersedes InTouch. InTouch and, and System Platform are, are both viable. They're both at 2020 and beyond. And they really serve the SCADA world in, 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 in two methodologies. Uh, InTouch is workstation-based SCADA. You know, again, you build that entire application for graphics and alarming and trending and scripting, and you have some clients off of that in a hub-spoke system. And System Platform is a widely distributed SCADA system. So this means that you have one single application is a great place where you can create templates, um, you create um, a model of assets, you can deploy this as I've shown here across multiple areas of the plant, but it's a single uh, SCADA application. And what's really important about that is it makes it much easier to take SCADA as a single silo and then connect it to similar databases that you're going to get with your asset management system or maybe on your computerized maintenance management system. So this is a typical deployment for a system platform in five areas. 
And what's, uh, what's really neat about this is that just with a couple of feature line items, um, I can enable a tier one historian that's unlimited. I can enable um, app server platforms in five areas of the plant with a single engine on them. And that would come with five supervisory clients. And then because in this particular picture, I have shown a total of 10 or two per area, I'd add five supervisor clients to that. Development studio license is included. And so you have a very cost-effective bundle at 2,100 credits to tackle this need. And you can add to it an optional uh, supervisory server. So let's just say you want to add something which allows unlimited additional business clients to it that could be added to it for additional benefit. So I hope a couple of those examples give you a feel um, for how these bundles simplify things and become cost-effective ways to pay for the software as a service. With that foundation um, kind of uh, explained, I think it makes it easier to understand where we're going with clients. So, you know, I would broadly say that a lot of people are looking to put really you know, thin client, HTML5 type clients in the hands of more users. Uh, companies are buying iPads or they're using smartphones or they have browser-based devices. Well, the good news is um, we have those too, and um, uh, there's some really compelling and cool things about them. And just in summary, um, you know, the first thing I'd point to is what we call in-touch access anywhere. So we've had this for many years. It allows access to both in-touch um, at the workstation SCADA and OMI, which is part of system platform. Uh, what's really cool is that it gives you inherent ability to handle multi-touch and, and gesture support, because you're, you're talking about shrinking what could be in a control room down to a small format. It is based on um, remote desktop services, and so it requires a Microsoft Server OS, and it does read and write. What have been evolving over the last couple of years are a new web client, which is an HTML5 web client, and uh, it allows access to Windows, and it, it allows navigation of those windows, access to industrial graphics, it works right now with in-touch only, um, but the roadmap has this, you know, essentially growing in capability. It's very low footprint. That's what differentiates it. It doesn't require um, uh, remote desktop services. It's all web server based, and it does read, write, or read only. And then on the right hand side is um, uh, basically a mobile app. So if you were to go into the app store for either Apple or Android, you would find this InTouch mobile app, and it's got all the benefits of the web client, but it adds to it additional things that you'd find in the enterprise environment. So it's going to have secure login, uh, alarm acknowledgement, right back access, and, and new features like, like QR access, QR code access, so that you can, you know, when that person is out there, they can take a snapshot of the QR code and that can fill in data um, that, that simplifies the experience when you're not in the control room. So, you know, moving on to the fourth idea, if you like that concept, and I, I hope you find that compelling, uh, the next question I get asked by existing uh, customers is, well, wait a second, I've got perpetual licenses. You know, how, do, how do I pivot here? So I've got good news. Um, we have some, several programs to help customers migrate their installed licenses um, over to a Flex program. You know, and just at a high level, everyone's unique, but if you think about what we're doing right now is that you own an inventory of licenses that's kind of in that top block there where I show existing annual support models. And, um, you know, in this day and age, it's, it's, those things are kind of living, breathing organisms. There's, you know, even when operating systems change or the code base changes, you know, there's always a plan for uh, a roadmap of updates and major releases. So when you're on support, you're entitled to those. Plus additional, you know, you get the technical support that comes along with it. Um, it, when we look at Flex, what we're doing is basically saying, all right, we're going to look at your existing group of licenses, we're going to look at what you pay for annual support, and we'll, 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 we'll create an equivalency, you know, for the, the amount that you pay for support, here's the number of credits you'd be entitled to to run your licenses as you've got them deployed today, and then we will add to that a pool of credits based on your particular needs. So based on where you are, if you see a need that you wanted to expand your historian or you want to grow the clients that you um, are capable of addressing with one of these unlimited supervisory client offers. 
Um, we would then add to the base uh, uh, subscription the number of credits you need to get there, and um, and then we'd work out um, a transition to go from support to to, to flex. Um, what's what's neat is that uh, uh, you know we your legacy licenses can stay just the way they are. Uh, but you can still manage them in your portal. And then uh, over time, if you'd like to take those legacy licenses and convert them into new flex licenses, you have that same flexibility to, to do that and to essentially deactivate them, uh, remove them, and reapply them somewhere else. And that um, brings me to uh, my fourth and, and final topic here, and that is um, everything I've talked about really is business as usual, using licenses on the plant floor. And again, in the world that we live, you'd expect that, right? There's control loops here and safety's involved. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't use a hybrid model where we take pre-built applications in the cloud and extend the reach of the SCADA that you have today. And Aviva calls that solution, that cloud-based solution, Insight. And believe it or not, I think we're going on seven years that this product's been in the market. And it's matured a great deal, and it's um, it's very you know, simple and easy. I think are hallmarks of the ability to connect it to an existing SCADA system, and and help clients uh, get information out to more users um, very quickly and very cost effectively. Um, and so you see a graphic we use often to talk about um, you know, putting this information in the hands of people with a tablet. Or um, and all of that, like I said at the beginning of the, of the session, is all about helping people make better decisions in the moment, more informed decisions. Since admittedly I am a geek at heart, I often show this to clients when I talk about Insight because um, the next question is, well, how easy is it to get the information and where can I get it from? And um, this is a Swiss army knife tool. So we have a very lightweight built-in publisher so if you're using software from Aviva or Wonderware or SciTech, all of those different brands in the Aviva portfolio, or Schneider Electric, um, there's a built-in publisher available for that. It makes it really easy. And of course, the world doesn't revolve around Aviva. And if you've got another device out there, you probably have an OPC server for it. So we can also get information from standalone publishers. And then you, know, you got to we. I always have to consider it doesn't always come from a PLC anymore, getting information often get, means going out to a web service. So we have RESTful API, and OData, just as uh, two other means for us to get information out of, uh, let's say, more other databases or other software platforms. And then there are tools for custom connectivity. All of this is always pushed one way in, a very, in an encrypted manner through a single port, very secure. You cannot get back into the OT network, and it goes up into the cloud, and that's where you can widely distribute the information. And what that enables really is for clients to quickly build uh, dashboards. You know, and those dashboards essentially um, uh, are, are drag and drop, simple. Um, they then uh, make it very, very easy to put the data in a format that, that works really well on a, on a portable device like a phone, uh, on a mobile dashboard, uh, without having to go through an engineering project. Very consumable, very usable. Um, there's also built-in features, again, when we talk about asset reliability, I often call this the if this then that uh, feature of Insight, because let's say you have um, high service pumps. You know, ideally, every 5,000 hours, these things have to be inspected. Maybe you have a computerized maintenance management system to do that, but it doesn't always get done on time because that may be schedule-based. So you can set a rule and say after 5,000 hours of runtime, data you probably know from your SCADA system, you can notify somebody that that's happened, and then that person is better informed to go and maybe run that periodic maintenance on it based on actual usage and not on a schedule-based system. Really improves the actionable side of asset reliability. And then there are add-in modules, pre-built, uh, so they're pre-engineered, so it brings the cost down to do downtime in OEE. And again, once you've got the data piped into Insight, you add this, and we can start to bring these systems online very, very quickly. And, you know, new features constantly coming. And I'm, only, I'm running out of time here, but one of the ones I'm most excited about is teamwork. So, you know, the idea here is that, you know, if, you're, if your workforce is remote and mobile, 
Um, how do they access digital knowledge? So you know, what if they could have their tablet scan a QR code and they can get access to the libraries of, um, you know, standardized libraries of instructions, uh, SOPs, videos, troubleshooting content, you know, that's all act accessible and organized for them to use when they need it. Um, think about, you know, the skills management side of this, that you may have videos, you may have um, skills training that needs to be done and, and essentially upskilling that goes with that. So who has gone through the revised skill training and who has not? You can manage all that in this environment. Um, you also need team-wide communication, maybe across a shift or a facility. Uh, standard notices that, that everyone needs to be aware of for events that are happening um, and when people log in, they're, they're immediately notified uh, broadly of what's happening and are aware of it. And then, of course, uh, issues management, uh, the ability to capture, track, and resolve problems, um, uh, call for help, call, call, you know, get escalation, and, and collaboration. Um, you know, all of this is driven around keeping assets up, around gaining access to information when you need it, um, and as issues come up, we can manage those issues, and then it becomes its own growing repository of information uh, for future people to access if they ever need it. And as always, this is web-based. So if this part of the portfolio, as an add-on to your SCADA solutions of interest, uh, URL is in the right-hand corner. You could go there um, and, and set up your own 45-day trial, or by all means, uh, let us know in your notes page and I'd be happy to have someone on our team contact you and walk you through the process. So again, I want to thank you all for your time today. I enjoyed it. I hope you got some value out of this. Please um, enter any remaining questions you might have. I'm sorry I'm out of time. We'll take the questions, we'll get you answers for them, um, compile them all, and uh, send it to everyone that's uh, registered or attended uh, today's event. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.